Hello, my fellow Earthling. Thanks for joining us on the World Government site. I'm Gary Davis, founder and world coordinator of the World Government of World Citizens. In the next couple of minutes, I will explain our overall purpose and how we activate it in the here and now. That little icon in the left-hand corner is the logo of the world government. Uh, the human figure in the center represents both you and me as sovereign human beings, as well as humanity itself to which we belong. And this is the perennial principle of the geodialectical union of the one and the many. In brief, we recognize the individual human within the framework of humanity, the species itself. Now the color yellow traditionally represents uh, light, the sun, or wisdom, the conceptual or value side of humanity. The green represents, of course, the natural world to which we physically belong, as do all other species. And the white represents our clear intelligence, which has no frontiers, from looking at the smallest atom to the furthest stars. Now, following the registration of over 750,000 individuals by the International Registry of World Citizens in 49, the World Government of World Citizens was founded on September 4th, 1953, at the City Hall of Ellsworth, Maine. That story and the follow-up is in our founding statement. It's called the Ellsworth Declaration, which you can find in the document section. And there you can read my reasoning and the government's three basic principles, which I call prime world laws. Though citizenship is an old idea, the modern world citizenship movement was a reaction to the catastrophe of World War II and the, and the nuclear threat. The proclamation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights by the General Assembly of the United Nations on the 10th of December, 1948, became a common standard of achievement for all peoples and all nations, as mentioned in the preamble. Its preamble also states authoritatively that, that human rights should be protected by the rule of law. While the very first article provides that, quote, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They're endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Then Article 21, 3, states essentially the political affirmation of that article, which says, quote, the will of the people shall be the basis of the authority of government. That's us, the people. And finally, Article 28 maintains that, quote, everyone is entitled to a social and international order in which the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration can be fully realized. Well, on this website, you can register your own world citizenship, thereby identifying yourself on a global political level. Now, by doing so, you do not relinquish any lower level allegiance, but on the contrary, you reaffirm and protect them just as municipal citizenship is protected by the next higher levels. Now, this global identification, however, confirms that you now belong to the planetary community, a sovereign people, both as a species as well as individually. And in direct confirmation, Article 13, 2 provides that everyone has the right to leave any country, note that word, including his own, and to return to his country. Well, since our present century of instant communication and even space travel, the world community itself has become what is known as a global village in which we are all neighbors. Our government issues a world passport in seven languages based on the right of freedom of travel. And then, as asylum from persecution is also a human right identified by Article 14 of the UDHR, the government issues to its citizens a world political asylum card you can find that in the applications section in case of need. Then the biographies of the 18 world coordinators or world commissions is in the commissions section. Click the legal department link to find the statute for the World Court of Human Rights. 
Humanities Court, not yet established, but the final step to follow the International Criminal Court in jurisprudence. You can also read my writ of certiorari and petition for rehearing to the U.S. Supreme Court in that section. In the catalog section is the list of my books on the subject of world citizenship, world government, and world law, as well as videos, and even world currency, the world kilowatt dollar. On the programs page, you can actually vote in the first world referendum on important and vital world citizen issues. You may wonder how we can justify our claim to world government and our right to issue such global documents uh, as the world passport, the world citizen card, and so forth. Well, it's very simple. It's our world, yours and mine. We were born on it, and we obviously have the right to be here, all six plus billion of us. The main basis which justifies the mandate of authority is Article 21 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which says, the will of the people shall be the basis of the authority of government. The will of the people, that's us. Check out the national constitutions. Most of them have that very principle in their preambles, that the power derives from the people. Here, we're simply extending that sovereign right of political choice to the actual level where our major problems are, such as world wars and global warming. You know, Tom Paine, the great human rights advocate in the 18th century, wrote that my country is the world. Well, you too can make the same claim, which is supported by Article 15.2, which provides that you have the right to change your nationality. That right is called freedom of choice. The idea of world citizenship and a governed world is ancient. Socrates called himself a world citizen 2,500 years ago, and Diogenes before that. All throughout history, the wisest people claimed to be world citizens, including Thoreau, Victor Hugo, and Einstein. Now, with instantaneous communication shrinking our world, you and I are already living as world citizens. Global problems such as war and environmental crises loom before us, not in some vague future, but here and now. And only world laws can best deal with these major crises affecting us. And you, by your claim to be a world citizen, and everyone else who makes the same claim, have made real peace across all the false frontiers throughout the world. Isn't that the real definition for world peace? Peace between individuals in a global framework? No other human time period has enjoyed such unlimited possibilities. It is revolutionary. So, join in our humanity and in our common destiny on this wonderful home planet on which we live together. We, as world citizens, have become real world peacemakers. I look forward to hearing from you, my fellow world citizens.